The commons is a very old uh, challenge for humanity. It's about those spaces where individual countries uh, do not have responsibility for the global collective. It's also about those places within our countries where the systems or sites are not managed by any one particular group. It can be virtual and it can be physical, like the Antarctic or now like the cybersphere. And it can be terrestrial, it can be the oceans, and it can also be outer space. And what we're trying to do is get our heads around the question of how do we manage these spaces as there are more and more of us in the world and increasingly our spillover impacts are greater. This is a very old economics problem. This is Port Meadow in Oxford, which is an ancient common. A lot of the common spaces were enclosed in the 17th century. Privatization led to private management of these spaces. But those that haven't been remain a collective responsibility. They, many of them are shared by different countries. This is the Aral Sea, shared by six countries, each doing the right thing, drawing water to feed their people, but collectively a disaster. So the question is, how do we come together, often against our short-term self-interests, to manage collective, longer-term challenges? They're tremendous successes. This is an image of the ozone layer that was closed through the Montreal Protocol. A collection of companies producing fluorochlorocarbons, small number of producers, were able to come together in the Montreal Protocol. And this, as Cameron will show, is now stabilized. But as there are more and more of us, as globalization leads to tremendous opportunity and growth, four billion new middle-class consumers over a period of about 25 years, and more interconnectivity, our spillover effects become greater and greater. And so this is a challenge of managing globalization, but managing the spillovers of our successes. For example, antibiotic resistance was not a problem 25 years ago. But now, as we move from 500 million to 3 billion people taking antibiotics, none of them are going to become effective. So we need stronger management the more we consume and the more interconnected we are. And this is the challenge that's getting greater and greater of commons management. It's also the case that places which might be a world resource, like the Amazon here, for the country concerned, might not make sense to preserve. It might make sense for Brazil to plant soya in the Amazon, but for the world this is a global lung. So how do we have this trade-off between global needs of commons and national interests? And there's some places, like outer space, which are totally ungoverned commons. There's no one with responsibility for this. So satellites, weaponization, space debris, these are issues which become a big challenge which no one now has responsibility for. These are, like the internet, emerging commons challenges. So we need to think longer term. We need to take lessons, and we'll come back to them from the Oxford Market Commission of Future Generations. Many of these things are about trade-offs between short and long term. And politics drives short-term decisions. Business is often driven to short-term decisions. So part of the question is how do we overcome these short-term challenges and ensure that we're able to make the decisions that would be in our collective interest. The market alone will not provide this response. This tuna was sold for 155 million yen. It will put the price up. There will be more high-tech ships going to chase the remaining tuna, like the remaining rhino, and there will be extinction. So we need to think of other ways that are in conjunction with the market to manage these commons failures. Go beyond the market and work with the market. 196 countries in the United Nations also have found that they are gridlocked. They are unable to meet this challenge because they have different interests and are unable to come together. So looking to global governance in the 21st century might be too little to too late. We need to think of new creative coalitions, new ways of working together, ability to come together. Some things require all actors, like smallpox eradication or Ebola. One person in the world with it is a threat to the whole of humanity. And we were able to do this with smallpox in the 1970s. But are we able now to bring all countries together? How do we involve the actors like failed states? And where can we draw the line? A small group of countries and a small number of places can achieve a huge amount. This image of New York symbolizes the fact that New York State produces more carbon emissions than the whole of sub-Saharan Africa. So if you can get the big actors in the room moving first, you often are able to achieve things that don't require all actors. 
Here in Davos, we have a wonderful opportunity to create creative coalitions between businesses, between small numbers of governments, and between like-minded civil society and other actors. And so the challenge I put to you is, are we able to think of new ways between us of managing these global commons challenges? Thank you.